Hello, my name is James Hunter, and I'm going to do a follow-up video that's somewhat related to a video I made earlier within the last week that where I discussed, uh, you know, just observations, opinions about people who are fit, muscular, and shape who are a bit south or less than 200 pounds versus people that are, yeah, way over 200 pounds, right? And to the number 200, yeah, it's a, it may be a little arbitrary, right? But it's just kind of a just to kind of frame uh, the video in terms of discussing larger individuals and smaller individuals. So you can watch that video. I'll put a link to it below. So today I'm going to talk about something similar, somewhat related, but a bit more specific to bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders like the IFBB. And I'm going to talk about Mr. Olympias uh, and people like former Mr. Olympias and people who were in the IFBB, but not necessarily a Mr. Olympia. So who did the best in terms of maintaining an impressive physique for as long as possible as they aged post-retirement or after they retired from competitive bodybuilding from the IFBB and uh, the former Mr. Olympias, right? And then just people in the IFBB. So let's look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? He's probably the most famous bodybuilder in the world uh, and a former Mr. Olympia seven times. Now with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the interesting thing about him is because I've mentioned in other videos, because of his bone structure, for like his wrist, elbows, uh, knees, ankles, etc., when his ability to put on significant muscle, it looks even more impressive with his aesthetics and how impressive he is as far as his chest, shoulders, arms, those famous bicep peaks and everything. So he looks pretty, uh, he looks big on screen, right? He looks a lot bigger than he actually is in real life because it's a bit of an illusion, a bit of an illusion bodybuilding can be and how you look. So because of this with Arnold in the movies, even though he was uh, significantly lighter than his com competitive days, like in Conan the Barbarian, uh, Conan the Destroyer, Commando, Predator, a lot of these other movies where he still has an impressive physique. Uh, Terminator, right? Uh, Terminator 1 and then 2, he got back in shape. He looks impressive with his shirt off because of the bone structure and this how he carries muscle. So on screen, he can pull off appearing to be somebody who's 235 pounds. Like in the movie Twins, Danny DeVito calls Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, a 235 pound virgin, right? So in all reality, in the movie Twins, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger probably is about 210, 215 pounds, not a 235 pound person. But it's believable when you see him on screen because it's just how certain people look when you film them on video, right? So Arnold Schwarzenegger was able to retain and maintain an impressive physique uh, well after retirement. Now, depends on how you look at it, right? Because he retired the first time in 1975, the movie Pump and Iron. Uh, he was uh, probably about 230, 228, 230 pounds, according to Lou Ferrigno. And then uh, Arnold you know, spoke to the issue before in interviews. So about, just to say 230 and Pump and Iron, uh, he wasn't his 1974 a uh, level of physique where he was a uh, bigger, a bit thicker, right? And, and the conditioning was there, but he was still impressive enough and good enough to win 1975. And then he retires. So you have a, a gap of five years after that, after that, right? So Arnold still would maintain uh, keeping himself in good shape. You would see maybe some photo shoots of Arnold and, you know, magazines and so on, and, and still a very noticeable physique that would stick out. So he's still maintaining it. If you look at photos between 75 to 1980, so 1980, the controversial 1980 Mr. Olympia win. Uh, a lot of videos on this topic, right? Should Arnold have won? Uh, he was probably 75% of his actual uh, prime or potential. Downsize, right? Thinner. The legs uh, were thinner. Uh, but he had those arms, right? The arms and back and shoulders were still impressive and good enough that Arnold, within certain poses, could still look impressive and, and look actually superior to his uh, competitors that day that he uh, competed against, even with individuals who weighed more than him and so on. So that's a whole other, other video and discussion. Uh, bodybuilders who were there at the 80 Olympia actually say that the photos that you see now today of the 1980 Mr. Olympia, they'll say, yeah, Arnold looks a lot better in the photos than how he actually looked in person there, right? Uh, that's why people were really upset, like how – could he win? He just didn't have his uh, same level of um, physique that he had back in 75 and so on. 
a lot of these individuals say if he would have had it, the 75 physique, then there would be no question. There, there wouldn't be people debating, did he deserve to win 1980? Anyways, that not to go too much on a tangent. So when you look at Arnold, when he retires 1980, and this is about the time that he's going to be making Conan the Barbarian, uh, all these other movies start coming out, uh, Destroyer, um, Commando, you have the Predator movies, Twins, right? And so on, a uh, raw deal, right? So scenes where Arnold is taking his shirt off. And then you get into the early 90s, uh, Total Recall, other movies. And yeah, the, the, the obligatory shirtless scene with Arnold, right? Because he's known for his body. So the point is, Arnold is still staying in good shape. Even in Running Man, he's uh, not physically as big or heavy anymore, but he looks good, right? He's got the physique. It's still there in Running Man. So he actually, Jesse Ventura is in that movie with him and they actually there's a scene where he fights jesse ventura's character at the end jesse ventura is six foot five tall thereabouts arnold in all reality people say he's more he's more of a six foot tall guy which is still taller than average you can see the discrepancy in height when they fight uh arnold with some of the other characters when he's going through that maze in the running man you can see the height differences but arnold still holds his own in terms of the physicality rule Quick point, uh, interesting point. In Predator, however, which also featured Jesse Ventura, right, in that in that movie, I don't have time to bleed, right? Well, they deliberately on purpose did not allow him to be filmed standing too close in proximity to Arnold Schwarzenegger in order to prevent Ar Arnold from appearing a bit dimin diminutive or, or smaller, right, or um, in, in stature because, you know, Jesse's a tall guy and, and pretty big back then during the 80s. Anyways, those are some side points. The point is, Arnold still looks freaking good. And Conan the Destroyer, where he's holding up that that wall, the gate, if you will, when they're going through that uh, through those corridors and maze, if you will, uh, to try to get through their adventure. Well, Arnold is holding up that gate, and you can see his back and shoulders. Very impressive, very impressive. So you get the idea. Arnold holds on to his physique for quite a while, all the way through his uh, 30s up into his 40s. It's not until he gets in his 50s, Terminator 3, I think he's, what, 56, thereabouts, maybe a little older when he does Terminator 3, gets back in shape. There's some behind-the-scenes uh, shots and video of Arnold uh, just in a T-shirt, uh, actually a sleeveless T-shirt, looking pretty good when he's spinning the shotgun in his hands, right, or the whatever gun he has. So Arnold, pretty good job, right? And despite his health issues and surgeries with the heart, uh, the, the valve issues, uh, bicuspid, I believe, congenital, uh, after that surgery, he was told not to lift as heavy anymore because of the pressure it can generate, the in internal pressure, his vascular system, et cetera. So that's why he would train lighter. So I imagine that probably um, had an effect, right? The degree to which you can train, yeah, that can affect what type of uh, results you're going to maintain or get. So Arnold, good job uh, for maintaining for a pretty good decent amount of time. And there's other things we can say about Arnold uh, in this in this video. So let's kind of talk about some other bodybuilders. You know, let's let's kind of get more recent, and then I'm gonna hit on some other ones. So Jay Cutler, former Mr. Olympia, I think he's a four-time Mr. Olympia. I could be wrong, at least four. So he actually is in his fifties. I'm 53 years old, so maybe Jay's a little bit younger than me, but he's in his fifties. Maybe he's the same age. I have to go look on the Wikipedia, right? So Jay Cutler, Mass Monster, the Quad Stomp, right? He's famous for all these things. Uh, well, for a lot of things, the Quad Stomp, right? And his most muscular, very impressive, very impressive. So today, is he that same size? No, he's not. But you definitely know he's in shape. He's fit when you look at him, and he appears muscular. There's some uh, photos of him or video to him at these uh, fitness expos where Jay takes his shirt off, and he's just wearing a pair of shorts. And you can see his uh, quadriceps are still impressive, chest, shoulders. He still, he still has uh, visible abs. So Jay's doing an excellent job at representing uh, an impressive physique post-retirement as a former Mr. Olympia. He looks good. So Jay Cutler's doing a good job, right? Uh, I would say in recent history today in terms of former Mr. Olympias, it's Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, Phil Heath is relatively still young for a bodybuilder, for bodybuilders, Phil Heath and Jay Cutler. Fifties is not too terribly old these days. Not if you're taking care of yourself, if you're on a TRT, HRT, a hormone replacement type of uh, therapies to help keep your hormones optimal, uh, diet, training, you definitely can maintain some impressive gains and, and results for quite a while 
as you age. So let's talk about Dorian Yates, right? Dorian Yates is one of these guys that was uh, one of the original mass monsters, as you would say, from the 90s. He was kind of like the, but that being said, with specific to holding on to your relative gains uh, as a bodybuilder or someone who's known for being very muscular. But to circle back with the point, how long can these individuals hold on to some degree, some percentage, you know, what percentage of their muscularity do they hold on to? Dorian Yates, in my opinion, probably compared to a lot of these other former Mr. Olympias and IFBB pros, he had more of a drastic, uh, a sharper decline, right? After he retired, after he retired, because in an interview with him, he mentioned that after he retired, he was kind of still maintaining some size. But then he started to think to himself, what's the point of staying this big anymore? I'm not competing. Why do I need to be on these steroids and doing these cycles? Uh, he talked about his children, right, that he, he would go pick up his kids from different activities and his friends would notice how big his dad is and all that jazz. So he's basically like, why am I doing this for? What am I doing this for anymore? Is this my ego, my idea of what I think I'm supposed to look like? So he went from that to an abrupt shift, it sounds like, to, yeah, he came completely off all the gear, all the steroids. He talks about that, right? And so his size just abruptly changes. And you can see that in photos of him. His arms are really small. Yeah, he had some muscle tears that uh, contribute to how small his, that both his arms actually look one smaller than the other because of both bicep and tricep tears. Dorian Yates, I know somebody who saw him at a, I think it was an Arnold Classic or one of these fitness expos years ago when he would go to those events. And he'll say, man, I saw Dorian Yates and he looks just like one of us regular guys. He looked like somebody who probably weighed 175, 185 pounds, right? And he's maybe 5'10", somewhere around there. So they were like shocked, you know, wow, this guy just looks like an ordinary human being now. So Dorian didn't hold on to his size or even a impressive percentage of it for very long because think about how big and impressive Dorian Yates was. Let's say he just maintains 85 to, yeah, let's just say 85% of that for five, 10 years. Uh, he's still going to look pretty impressive. Of course, there's Ronnie Coleman, eight time Mr. Olympia, right? Now, with Ronnie Coleman, he's got a whole other context going on with uh, substantial, multiple significant, significant injuries, uh, orthopedic issues, his back, bilateral hip replacements, uh, nerve damage, etc. Now, before Ronnie started to rapidly decline, even with his uh, post-surgery issues and uh, hip replacements, he was still ambulatory. He was still walking around and getting around. He still looked pretty decent. And I know him and Jay would kind of... Uh, uh, mess around with each other at these fitness expos and take their shirts off and hit that most muscular pose. Uh, I remember Ronnie still doing stuff like that with, with Jay when they would just kind of, uh, you know, play around a bit. But then that didn't last very long for Ronnie. He started just rapidly declining and deteriorating to, to the point where he's just, you know, limited to or regulated to, I guess, mobility scooters, wheelchairs. And then he uses that little walker thing to get around on. Um, not to make fun of Ronnie, it's just what it is. Uh, Ronnie Coleman, by the way, he's been on record as saying um, he does not feel sorry for himself, right? So he maintains a good attitude. He feels very fortunate and blessed for the life that he's lived. Okay, so there's a bunch of other people I could talk about, but I don't think I could really do this video justice if I do not bring up Albert Beckles. Albert Beckles and Robbie Robinson, right? The I guess the Black Prince, as he may be called. So with Albert Beckles... Robbie Robinson, uh, these two individuals definitely have maintained uh, impressive, uh, uh, I guess, impressive quality amount of muscle. They've maintained uh, the aesthetics, the looks. Definitely when you see, would see them and do see them, they stand out, they stick out. It's definitely impressive still. Like it's obvious they're a bodybuilder in terms of the quality of physique that they can present with their shirt off, wearing a tank top, etc. Now, Albert Beckles has you know, been competing uh, for a long time. I remember seeing photos of him, uh, the 70s, competing in the 80s. In the 80s, he's already older than the other individuals. He was competing in his 50s and, of course, 60s. For guys like him, no, he was not a former Mr. Olympia, but he was an IFBB professional competitive uh, bodybuilder who was able to maintain his physique for a very, very long time. Robbie Robinson, similar issue. He's not physically as big anymore, but isn't as, but in the seventies, uh, he's got very visible abs. Uh, you could see the definition and the quality of muscle, his, uh, shoulders, back chest, arms are still good. So these individuals, Albert Beckles, Robbie Robinson, I would say these two ones, 
you might, you, I guess, give him a tie. Maybe you might argue Albert Beckles uh, edges him for the win. For former IFBB pro, in terms of just an IFBB pro overall, for doing, I guess, doing the best to have maintained their physique for longer than anybody else, anybody else, right? So what are your thoughts and opinion? Is it Albert Beckles, Robbie Robinson, who who, who did who did better to hold on to their gains or relative, uh, you know, physique in terms of uh, compared to their their youth and their physical prime. All right, Frank Zane, right? Let me throw him into the mix here too. Frank Zane, I think, um, three time Mr. Olympia. Uh, he won his he won his Olympias in the uh, the latter part of the late seventies. Frank Zane's an interesting person because you know he's. One of these individuals who probably weighed around 175 pounds, I would guess maybe 180, uh, supposedly before the 1980 Mr. Olympia, or actually it is on record, he um, had an injury at a swimming pool. I think he fell off of a, the the recliner thing that you lay on at, the, at a swimming pool, and he had an injury, I think, to his girlfriend in PM blood, and so he had doctor's orders. He couldn't do anything. Now, he had doctor's orders. He had to rest and not do anything. He ended up losing like maybe 10, 15 pounds. He was supposedly at his heaviest. He was like close to 190. Uh, he was full and he was talking about it was probably going to be probably going to be the best physique and package that he had ever brought. But then he injured himself and then he lost about 10 pounds, 15 pounds, maybe at the most. He wasn't sure if he should compete. He claims that Arnold told him, no, you need to compete, right? And Arnold told him to compete. Never mind, he didn't know Arnold was going to, you know, enter that 19, last minute entry into the 1980 Mr. Olympia. So that being said, the point is Frank Zane was never really a big person uh, to begin with in terms of, uh, you look at his bone structure, small bone structure, but he did do a pretty good job too. Frank Zane kind of held on to reasonably close to that type of physique for a long time. You look at his... Uh, 50s and 60s, not a big guy, but still fit. You can see definition in his in his legs, uh, abs, shoulders, and arms. But now that he's older, as soon as he got into his 70s, uh, you could definitely see the effects of aging on him. Definitely not uh, looking muscular, Mr. Olympia, or even just a general fit, uh, fit muscular look anymore compared to other people his age that actually are doing a better job as holding on to their gains, if you will. Nothing personal. It's just an observation. Now, he's probably 80, maybe older. I don't know. So, yeah, it's kind of harder for some people than others. When you're that size, you kind of might get a little more shrivelly looking because you just don't have a lot in reserve of the muscle that you had to begin with. It's a whole other conversation. The more muscle you have going into your older age, it's like a savings account, right? So if you go into old age with not a lot of muscle, that might not be so good when you hit 70s, 80s. Anyways, um, there can be other bodybuilders, uh, people in the IFBB. Maybe you can uh, put some suggestions below. I'm going to keep this video relatively short, uh, or I could just keep going and going. So I guess as far as if you look at up to the 90s, 1990s, at that point, in my opinion, it probably was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's in two categories. He's also celebrity, movie star. Uh, he held on to his gains pretty darn good. Always looked impressive in the movies with the shirt off. Conan the Destroyer, Commando, etc. Um, when he start kind of coming further and uh, moving more into recent history, then I would say it's people like Jay Cutler, Dexter Jackson. And I guess for the overall, overall title would be, if you're just looking at someone who's an IFBB competitor, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, Albert Beckles, um, uh, Robbie Robinson, right? People like them. And real quick, like Sergio Olivia, he came back in the 1980s and competed. Didn't win. He didn't place maybe all that well, but he still had, a, you know, some uh, muscle mass size. Uh, wasn't looking like he did in his prime, right? The aesthetics he had when he was younger, but he held on to the size for quite a while too. Anyways, these are just my thoughts and opinions. Um, I'm 53 years old. I grew up uh, in the 70s and 80s. I remember looking at the magazines. There was no uh, internet, things like that. And I, have uh, myself, did a little bit of amateur level bodybuilding, MPC, competing as a lightweight, um, and so on. So I, I, I can appreciate, I know some things about the bodybuilding culture, been an observer of it, I guess to an extent you could say a fan, um, culture, if you will. 
So if you like videos and contents where I just talk about things like this sometimes, other stuff too, uh, mental health, physical health, wellness, existential issues, uh, subscribe to my channel. Check out some other videos. Like this video if you like these type of conversations. And I hope everybody has a good day. Thank you.